Father know more than God? God's father, does he know more than God? God's shape is man and woman. That's why we call it. Is that? We're going to have to hold that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's why we call heavenly parents. God is parents. Shape, yeah. Yes, and then... Uh, and then... Jesus said... Can you explain? <laughs> yeah, Jesus said he's... He, he will come in this or again. You can help her as well, yeah? I don't mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. you can. Because yeah. I know English is difficult sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, Too confusing. Yeah. Before Jesus Christ died, he said, he, well, he will come again in this earth. So, uh, you believe in Jesus? Yes, believe in Jesus. And I believe in Jesus come he just came again here, and then uh, yeah, he just came again. But not what was his name when he came again? Moon. So Sun Jesus Myung. came in the form of some young. Sun Myung Moon. Some young. Yeah, some young Moon. My Please pronunciation, speak. my Japanese, very bad. Oh, it's okay. It's some okay. young Moon. Yes, he came here uh, through Jesus. Some now, where did he come? He's died already. In Japan? In, from Korea. Korea. Yeah. But, uh, so Korean Jesus. Yes, Korean Jesus. You, you know, uh, God, first time God sent Adam and Eve. Do you know Adam and Eve? Yes. That's why Adam and Eve, that's why God also, if Jesus came again in this earth, they are not, uh, he is not come alone. He have to met and he has to marry with wife, his wife. That's why God, first time God sent Adam and Eve, man and woman. That's why when they when he come back in this earth, he, he has to meet his wife. And then he has to make good family and good society. But you, but you also believe God has a God, yeah? Yes, God is God. Yeah, God so is God has a father? God is parents. Does he have parents? The person or God, God? God. Does God have a dad? So you God say yes? Mission. So God is the highest or there's someone higher than God? God is the higher that is the highest of course. And he has daughter? Yeah, he has daughter, like the only begotten son. Do you know only begotten son? They say he Jesus, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. But Jesus said, he said, he will come again in this earth. That's why he gave the mission, someone who can do Jesus' work. So, he's in, I believe that he is the Son of God. And his wife is Han, Han Ja Han Moon. Yeah. And, and they're dead now, yeah? Yeah, father is dead, dead now. Like, oh uh, yeah, he's dead The wife now. is still alive? Yeah, wife is still alive in this place. I should, yeah. She is in Korea now. Right? Uh, not, not Korea now. So, yeah. so what do you believe? That people have to accept him to go to paradise? Or how do you get to paradise? Uh, it's, uh, you know, we believe that. Work, like spiritual world, yeah, yeah. yes, spiritual world, physical world, yes, we connect it, connect it. So, when we make uh, heaven in this earth, spiritual also can uh, be heaven. So, we have to make near heaven here, like a uh, family. How many, pe how many people follow Jesus when he came? How many people? Because uh, here we never hear about that. Oh yeah, of course. UK, US, Canada, Pakistan, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, you know, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, yeah. UAE. No one mentioned anything about Korean Jesus. Oh, yes, Korean so Jesus. we but we also believe as Muslims that Jesus will come oh. again. Yeah, we believe he will come again. But we believe when he comes again, the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews, they will all unite. The people that are given Hidayah, they will believe in him. 
and most people will believe in God. That's why I'm surprised that Korean Jesus came and he went and no one is any the wiser. But you know, it's not a... Uh, he is the uh, received mission from Messiah, right? And He is? Uh, yeah, he yeah. received mission from Jesus Christ. Yes, okay. And then, but, you know, mission, not only do just husband, like together, wife, husband and wife. So still, we have, uh, we still arrive with mother, his mother. So just to come back, coming back to the question, how many followers did he have? Oh, okay. Actually, each nation, all nation, we have our foundation, small, but even small. We have more foundation, but I'm, I don't know how many people do it. Roughly but 500, 500, 1000, how much? But I, uh, we always pray, pray together. Yeah. But in Korea, we do live, YouTube live. That's and nice, but how many followers actually yeah. believed in him when he but came? This live joined uh, 5 million people watching YouTube. Five. Five million people watch YouTube? Yes, Oman Myung watching YouTube. Watching Jesus on YouTube? Yes, we, we always doing pray. pray. No, when Korea, because you said Korean Jesus has passed away now. Yes, yes, yes. So when he was alive, people following him. So my question, how many people were following him? Only in Korea or in Japan or China? Oh, how, where were people following him? Now? Uh, no, when he was alive. Ah, so many, but I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. But I have never heard of this. Where is the evidence for this? Proof. Maybe each nation 100? Maybe each nation 100? Yeah, 100. Uh, but in each, Korea, every nation? Yes. Even in Pakistan, uh, I've never heard of a Pakistani believe in the Korean Jesus. But Korea, Japan, and America—it's a lot. So, these numbers that you're mentioning, can they be evidence? Are there government records of these that we can check, or is it just a guess? So, I, I guess what I'm asking is, I need an evidence that there was somebody that came with that name. He had a following. How much was that following? From the sounds of it, he doesn't have, he didn't have much of a following, which we would say it's a disrespect to Jesus because we believe when he will come, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people will be following him. Yeah, because he, it will be impossible not to follow him because he is a prophet of God. You see, so if you're saying Korean Jesus has come and the rest of the globe is none the wiser. No one knows except a hundred hair, a hundred hair. I'm saying, are you sure it was Jesus or it was somebody making, making up the story? How can you prove he was actually the guy? Prove. Oh. Actually, I cannot explain more because my English is not good. But I want to uh, invite someone who okay. knows well. Not the background. Sorry? Oh, it's speaker's corner. People come, they talk. Ah. And it's filmed, this discussion. This park is this park is very famous. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what your question? What is your yeah, question? Yeah, so my question is... You can answer also. Yeah, nice to meet you. Sorry, 
We met once long ago, wasn't it? Did we? Yeah. I don't think so. No, maybe it was someone else. Uh, I mean, so maybe it was another brown guy. Yeah, yeah, my family's from Iran originally. Okay. Your family's from Pakistan. <laughs> yes, they are, yeah. My neighbors. Yeah. If I was born here and I worked in Russia and I studied in America, my wife's Filipino. Okay. And I met these people in South Korea. Fantastic. So Too we many were, countries, sorry. So we were conversing with them and they were telling me about a Korean Jesus. Yes. And oh. yeah. So, and they were saying, uh, I think there was a bit of a barrier with regards to the English and I was asking, look, what's the evidence that somebody that identifies as a Korean Jesus came? How much was the following? How, how can we determine the evidence of if he was followed, what teachings he came with? And then that's when they wanted a bit of assistance. So I think that's where we are roughly. Okay, that's interesting. Korean Jesus is a whole world. That's a whole different level. Is there a Korean Jesus? Or was there a Korean Jew? I think we're talking about the... Uh, okay, let's rewind. Okay. Because I don't know what's been said. So what I do know is that there's a unification movement in Korea. Maybe their leader was the one that started. That's what we're talking about. What they're saying was uh, incarnation of Jesus. Jesus' the second coming. And he was born in Korea, hence the term Korean Jesus. Okay, okay. I've had these discussions before. Right. And right. what I understood is that every family should be a true parent. There should be a true father and a true mother. That's what I understood they're saying. And they're saying I, that. I don't know what that means, but because they were talking about the second coming of Jesus. Yes. So that's where that was the interesting part of the conversation that, oh, right. you believe Jesus has come back again? Yes. Oh, yes. Which, which okay. they do. Yeah. And then my question was, where did he come? And you said, Korea. Yes. And then I said, okay, wow. so it's Jesus that came. So you don't believe that? I believe that we need true parents. We should be true parents in our families. No, I get that. But yeah. do you believe that Jesus came in Korea? So I came from a different background. I'm a very different background. So he doesn't believe that, I, I think. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you. Oh. I'll tell you what I believe. Because my family is from Iran, as I said. And I was born in England. So I come from a very different way of looking at it, honestly. So I believe that we need true families, true parents. I believe, of course, we need a yeah. mother and a father. Yeah. Yes. Of course. And then, so it starts with Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve would have been true parents. I think that's what I believe. That's how it was I, Well, we're yeah. on the same page with this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That just in parentheses, just to say that's completely not what we were doing today at all. Okay. Because there was some people being imprisoned in Japan and we just said, let's support this. Aha, uh -huh, that's why so I think... So it's completely different. Right, right, that's right. why I was a bit... Whoa, okay, so I got you, I got you. So I we, didn't see we, the we, back of her shirt. But no, but I'll talk about this in, as much as you want. If you right. really want, we can meet. But just to get that into the quickly. So what happened was we had a lot of Japanese people who were volunteering. I, I, we, we will speak about that, but because we had a productive yeah, conversation okay. and it developed over time okay. if we now jump to a tangent it's like we've abandoned this conversation it's not abandoned. yeah Sorry, I don't so want to i think she wanted assistance with regards to this okay. we can come to that afterwards because yeah. we've already started this discussion okay so i don't know if you want to Very speak deep. about it i don't know if you want to or you don't okay so we talk about two parents yes yes yeah? okay so say what you want to say what is your question again? so i was asking with evidence with regards to if the korean jesus can actually be measured and if there's any evidence that we can see if he is actually who he claims he is and then that's when you said okay because of your language you wanted to call someone else so we've reached the point of Korean Jesus which um, I don't know if he exists he doesn't exist uh, but you can say more deeply say what you want to say about Korean Jesus yeah I'm just I just want evidence if you believe that Jesus came in Korea how do we know that he was who he claimed he was, what's the evidence to claim that he was indeed Jesus incarnated as this Korean individual? No, but I, I, mean, I, can, I can say something which I know, but okay, I have to shift over a bit. I was trying to do something else. Uh, well, this is because so corner, what, you're what, I, to... what, I, what I know yeah. is that this is the concept from cooperating for quite a while now is that there was supposed to, Adam and Eve were supposed to have a family. That family was supposed to start all the families. This is what God wanted in the beginning to create the world. This, I'm trying to explain the concept as clearly as I Just, just uh, so I don't interject later on, do you believe this or you're just explaining their belief which is separate to yours? No, I think no. it's the same belief, but right. I'm... We are same. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the same belief, but just... 
Oh, yeah, let's see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. <laughs> so that's what I understand. Right. Is that? It's I that's got that. Adam and Eve. Yeah. They were parents. They were true parents. True. They were fantastic. Great. They they should have. But something went wrong in the beginning of history, and we have lots of problems, right? Aha! Uh -huh. What went wrong? So what went wrong is exactly what needs a lot of discussion, right? I think. Were they true parents, though? They could have been. What do you mean? What's the probability of the could or could not? Because I think human beings are given freedom and choice by God. So God didn't make human beings to be force them to be evil. But I think we have a human being responsibility. So I think we can't blame God if the world is evil, because humans made it evil, right? Humans actually created the evil. The arrogance, or the murder, or the stealing, or the irresponsibility. So, so, so they humans. want, when you say they want true parents, I'm just trying to understand what you mean by that. So what I was going to talk about was in the original ideal, yes. because God is good, and I, I, be, I believe God is all good or good? Absolute good, source of goodness. And so love all and good, that you can't do bad. God is the source of goodness. God is, okay. yeah, I think, and it's difficult to talk about God intellectually because we're limited, but I think God wouldn't predestine badness. That's my personal belief. In other words, God would not force evil on human beings. When you say your personal belief, like... Uh, and I think this is the same the, the, belief. Uh -huh, so FFS, yeah? FFWPU. Peace, uh, Family Federation for World Peace. I so you said this is your religion, yeah? Yes, yes. Kind this of. is your religion? I don't know, I don't call it a religion for me, honestly. Okay. It's my, but my beliefs. a bit confusing. That's it, but it's my beliefs. Okay, so, your belief, belief in religion, yeah, my, I could go you. My beliefs is that God, I think we have a lot of common beliefs. Actually. Of course. Um, so God doesn't force people to be evil. It could have been good. I think this is the crucial point, that God is good and could have been good, but human beings did the evil. This is what my understanding is. So maybe it seems like a small minor point. Anyway, the world is evil, history has been evil, there's been bad How, how would you, if, if I was to ask you your belief, like the belief of this movement, how would you give me a summary of the belief? For example, if you ask a Muslim, we, we believe there's none worthy of worship besides God, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of God. That's a summary. There are five pillars, Shahada, the declaration of faith, Salah, praying five times a day, um, Zakat, giving obligatory charity if you hit the Nisab level, and then Psalm, fasting in the month of Ramadan, and obligatory pilgrimage. So I can summarize it all. Um, in like these here, actions. Yeah, in these actions, in these principles, yeah. however you want to say it. So if I was to say to you, that as somebody that's coming across this religion for the first time, right. how, can, how would you give me a synopsis or a summary that we can kind of bounce off from? But I think summary. Martin... I can do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Summary, you, uh, you know, uh, I already speak about Jesus. He will come again. And then he will come already from Korea. Uh, he is Son Myung Moon and his wife is Hakuza Han Moon, right? And then, uh, no, okay. uh, not, I can, I can summarize but like exactly, but we are, we have a divine principle. Do you need him to help you? Because he, uh, it's, uh, no, he, he's giving a different story to yours. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah? Remember, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but then I will double check with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll, it'll help. So oh, just sorry, summarize. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Because so you're saying there was Jesus. Yes. Just, I don't want to... Jesus, yeah. Jesus came in the earth already. In the earth already. Then, uh, but he's passed away now. But he's passed away and his grave is in... Still alive. His grave is in Korea. Yeah, he's from, uh, she's from Korea. And he is from? Korea. Korea as well. Yeah. His grave is in Korea, yeah? From Korea, right? Grave. He's buried. Buried? Like in the ground after passed away. Yes, yes, he is. Okay, okay. But his wife is still alive. Yes. What is she regarded as? A prophet or a religious leader? Yes, a religious Who... leader. And she wants to try to speak about heavenly parents. I told you, right? Heavenly yes, yes. parents, God is parent. That's why she announced uh, everyone to know heavenly parents. God is heavenly parents. So just, just one second. You know when she says parents, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that there is a father and a mother. 
Yeah, two people, like you said, Adam and Eve, they make parents. You're using the plural, correct? But for God, is, he doesn't mean you. God is just one, right? God is one, right? God is one, but I think she was just making a mistake. Right, right. then how, how does that fit in the divine parents theology of yours? If he's only one, how does he fill in the definition of heavenly parents? I think you should say heavenly parent. Yeah, yeah. Parent one. Yeah. Then yeah, he's yes. incomplete then, yeah? Why? Because if parents by definition is a male and a female, a husband and a wife, mother and a father, and God is only the father, then my question would be, where is the mother? So I think if you went deep in that philosophy, it would say God is the unified, God is the source of everything. So all the masculinity in the world comes from God and all the femininity was, was created by God. So everything Would you assign a gender to him? Or would you say not he's really. neither father, father nor mother? I wouldn't, I wouldn't assign a gender, no. So he's not father or mother? He's maybe, he's the source of all the parental emotions that... Do you yeah, believe mother, he... Heart of mother and father. Heart. So, heart of mother so Christians, yeah. Christian calls, Christian calls God father. Do you also call God father? Yes, father. Also Why don't... Sometimes I say mother. Aha, uh -huh. do you, do you say mother as well? Not really, but <laughs> but you see, that's why, because you said it's a religion, that's why I feel I have to, just to be open with be you. Be open, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's many different kinds of people in this big movement. Some yes. people have it as a religion, uh -huh. but some people are just have their own religion, but they're just volunteering to help a peace organization. Uh -huh, okay. So I think... So you can have your own religion and be part of the humanitarian side yeah, of this exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. Would I, you say you're part of the religion or the humanitarian side? You see, this is my problem. I think I went, as I grew up, as I grew older and older, I started to feel that God is one for the whole world. Yeah. I started feeling like yeah. that. And I felt God is more than me. So if Agreed. I feel sorry for Africans, or yes. if I feel sorry for someone in the other part of the world. Or Japanese. Or Japanese. Yeah. Today, today we're helping the, yes. the poor guy. From Pick 31 up Japan. years old to 43 years old, he was kept by his parents in the house because yes. they didn't agree with his religion. So we're saying that's quite, that's not, that's good. not, not in the modern world anyway, it's not yeah. the norm or standard. Anyway, yeah. We should allow freedom of belief. But, um, but I think as I've gone through the years, we, we, we change. I think if I meet someone from the mystical side of Islam, for example, I feel a lot in common with them. Because we're talking about Islam before, you mentioned Islam. Yes. And I try not to to strictly... I, I try to see the good in people and try to cooperate with their good side. So if they might have a bad side, I can't do anything about how they that's, grew up. That's or they good as a, as a way of life and a way of living. And that's fantastic. I applaud you for that. that. But the I fact can that have you're, something in yeah. common with it. No, and that's brilliant. And I think in the work that you're doing, that's very, very important. And that's respectable, but I'm, I, I'm more interested. You're trying to in find the, the original religion. Yeah, yeah so we're talking more in terms of theology. Okay. So in theology, the lady was saying that they, in their theology, Jesus has. Not only do they believe Jesus will come again, but he has come. Yes. He has passed away. Yeah. His wife is still there. Yes. They're both in Korea. So my initial question was that how many followers? Sorry. Yeah, no problem. How, how many? many followers? Yeah, how many followers? Because I can tell you. In here in the West, or even when I go to the Middle East, or even Pakistan, we've never heard of a Korean Jesus. The only time I've heard of a Korean Jesus in a movie called 22 Jump Street. And Ice Cube is making a joke because they're in a church. Yeah. That's the only time I've heard of a Korean Jesus. Yeah. yeah? But uh, that's, that's why... Interesting. Yeah, that's, so that's why when she said that that's our belief, I'm saying, okay, if no one in the Western world, in the Middle East have heard, how many people have actually heard that he came and he left? What impact did he leave and what contribution? Because we as Muslims believe he will come again. But we believe, we believe Jews, Christians and Muslims will unite with him under the banner of oneness of God. And that he will have a mass following, a mass following. So I find it interesting that the claim of Jesus already coming and gone and no one is any the wiser. So I'm saying, what happened with the following? How can I measure this empirically? Check this myself. Oh, Who's right. the wife? Is she the wife of God, of Jesus, the son of God? Okay. Do you see? Some empirical parts I can help. So, um, Do you believe this, by the way, this I, theology? 
the, my understanding of it, yeah. Yes. But I don't know if it's exactly what you said. So, but I was, I was saying my understanding. In terms of him coming in Korea and dying in Korea. See, what my understanding is, is, is that, because he said empirically, so it's good to be empirical. Yes. I like that, actually. So this particular couple, they started their own movement and they had followers and they were persecuted in North Korea. I think he was put in a concentration camp. North Korea, yeah? North Korean uh -huh. concentration camp. Ugh. And he survived. This is the story that I know. But why fast forward, it took about 40 years, uh, roughly 30, 40 years. To build this up is the family that... Uh, the one that you were talking about. The Jesus one, yeah? That you were saying Okay, quote, quote. I don't know if I would... That's one way of putting it, but okay. Okay, cool. Um, but I wouldn't have said like that. But anyway, so it's okay. Um, How would you say it then? So I like the theology of true parents. So I, I'll, I'll, but basically, just to get that quickly to empirical. Sure. They did start a movement, which was, I think, originally trying to get Christian groups involved. Hey, I'll stop you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it was to get the Buddhists to cooperate. I think they cooperated with them. And then eventually, I think different religious groups, maybe some Muslims even in Korea, cooperated. And the original purpose they had was unification of North and South Korea. That's why it started long ago. And then the communists were the main people trying to imprison them and kill them. It was because they didn't like any religion at all. Right. So this is the backstory behind it, the background. And then once you get to the 1960s, 70s and 80s, then they started creating projects for peace, which was what I know about a bit more details, which is the Scientists for Peace, the Media for Peace. And I think these projects gradually grew bigger and bigger, and they started coalescing different people. Did he ever make the claim of being the incarnation of Jesus? Was that claim I, made? I, I, what I've heard is he was saying he made a definition of Messiah to be true parents. And then he said, true parents to give free birth. So you haven't heard him claim to be Jesus? I, what I've heard just a few days ago, yeah. actually funny, I went to this peace meeting, was that they said he was praying and Jesus told him, you didn't finish what I didn't finish, which is trying to make the world the kingdom of heaven. So the fundamentalist Christians persecuted them and said, so you're saying you're Jesus. That's what they accused him of, actually. And then they got the communists to imprison him for two years and eight months and he almost died. But he survived in the concentration. And so that was more of an insult that you're claiming this when he wasn't. Because, and it's a label that's been attached because to Because in him. the 1940s and 50s, it was easier to do that when there was yes. Korean War and they were very poor and they'd been bombed by many people. So it was an accusation, not a claim he it made. It was a way to isolate a group and persecute them and put them in prison. So you're and saying he didn't claim to be Jesus? What I heard is he explained his theology that it should have been true parents, Adam and Eve, like we said, and that Jesus came to make the kingdom of heaven. So do you still believe that he was Jesus? He received Jesus' mission. He received Jesus' mission. He received Jesus' mission from Jesus? Yes. I think that's closer to the truth now. Okay, we're getting there. So that's what you believe also, yeah? He said that Jesus, I prayed to Jesus and he told me. And also, then, he sees Jesus as God. What? He worshipped Jesus. That's no, what he another to. reason they persecuted that group is because they said Jesus is not God. Uh -huh. They said that God is yes. God and Jesus. So they got a lot of persecution from traditional Christian groups for being kind of Christian background, but saying Jesus is not God. Right. So they got a lot of persecution from fundamentalist Christian groups. Um, so I think there was only a very few, there's very rare Christian groups who actually say Jesus is not God. That's very rare, actually. Unitarian something, so very yeah. rare. So they got a lot of persecution by saying that. And he said, no, he said, no, they said Jesus is man. But they said the mission of Jesus was to bring peace in the world, the mission of Jesus, but he was killed prematurely or whatever you explain, whatever happened. But anyway, we don't have kingdom of heaven for the last 2000 years. That's a fact, empirical fact. So he was saying that Christian groups don't fight among each other. And then he was saying to the religious groups, don't fight because what the communists were doing were getting the religions to separate and then they were picking them off one by one and in the end they made a law in North Korea, no religion at all. So let me ask you a question, let me Korea. ask you a question. Because you said you you feel somewhat of an affinity with the spiritual Muslims, Yeah. what's preventing you from accepting Islam and identifying as a Muslim? I don't know if anything is preventing me, maybe, I don't know if anything is preventing me. I'm an open book. You made me think. Yeah. I don't know if anything is actually preventing me, but what I worry about is people's definitions. Yeah. People put a label and they say this is Muslim or this is Christian or this is a religion. What and evidence? I, 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 what more, evidence would you require for you to be convinced that this is the correct religion? Yeah. 
What, what's your criteria of evidence? Some people, they're very philosophical. Some people are very empirical. I mean, for me... What sort of person are you? I, I, I don't know if I... I think I'm trying to embody goodness in my life and my family. So I pray, I ask God, I try to do the right thing for myself. When you I'm, say I'm, you pray to God, mm. what's your definition of God? Like, is He one? Is He a trinity? I, I, I never say... I always say one. I never say trinity. Okay, so you believe that there's one God? You yeah. believe he's powerful, all hearing, all seeing. You know the typical characteristics of God. Do well, you... yes and no. Yeah, I, I mostly agree with that. I, I, God is source of love, source of goodness. But I get sometimes worried when I meet fundamentalists. That's why I was saying the thing about good and evil and the beginning yes, of evil. Because yes. I feel some Christian groups say sometimes it makes it sound like God wanted evil. So that then Jesus can be crucified. They can talk I, about I, that. I, yeah. I feel a bit worried about that. So I want God to be really good. And I want God to be source of goodness and truth and beauty and all this stuff. But, but the point also here is truth is arbitrary. It doesn't care about what we think or our feelings. Truth is truth. And the thing is, truth is something that can be measured. It can be measured empirically, philosoph philosophically rationally and that I think is the crux of the discussion indeed how we then express that certain religious folk will uh, prioritize certain types exactly. of worship over yeah, others and right. that's I think where you are yeah. but I'm saying even if we rewind that a little bit and talk a bit about the the, the theology of the matter I want to understand what your theology is and and kind of where you are my at the theology moment. would be something like like parents hearts so so if we grow as a child, first in a family, you receive love from parents. Indeed. Then you're a brother and sister, you share. Then you have a younger, oh, sorry. You have a younger brother and sister. Oh, it's kicking off. <laughs> yeah. You give more than you receive, so you become more. Then you get to a stage where you can say to somebody, I'll give you all my energy and my time and my love, so you can be a couple. And then you have children, and even the children don't understand. You give them, so I think there's higher and higher levels of... Family values, the spreading of love and positivity. So I think but, yeah. each family could... Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, no, no. I just, so I, if you, I, I think, so maybe one of the closest things to God's love in the world would be parents' love. Agreed. If even the child doesn't understand. Even you might punch you, you still give love to your child. So I think that's a very high level. Uh, I agree. So those are parents and we get that in terms of That's, living yeah, living yeah. our life but in terms of our relationship with God. Parents in the world, I'm saying outside of the world, not contingent on the world. Yes. So when it comes to God, you believe that there's one God. Do you yes. believe that God sent a revelation? And what would be I the criteria so. what would be the criteria for you to believe that you know what? This has to be revelation. What are the criteria that you have in your head? I think I, I feel God guides me in my life and I've gone through different circumstances and different We're talking about a book that's objectively measurable by people, isn't it? Something that can be tested scientifically, for example, manuscripts. We can, te we can test using the points that are measured with primary sources. For example, there are certain I'm not too much into the... Because I'm a bit worried that even though 99% you're right, truth is very absolute. But finally, very deepest point, the truth is just something coming from God. So it's finally expressing but that's the, the heart outcome of, of that truth, isn't it? That so you I have think finally the heart and the love is more important than strict rules and truth. This is what I would say. And that's that's fair enough because one of the reasons and most one of the most important reasons that God created us is love. Yeah. <laughs> is love. He's he's, uh, he's an angry Zionist he, who believes. He didn't want me to talk to some people. I noticed. Yeah, it's a very. Uh, he's I a very. Forgot your name. I'm so Zishan, Zishan. Zishan. Sorry, Farhad. Sorry, I keep forgetting. No it. problem. No problem. Yeah. He's just an angry Zionist. Who's, I've spoken to him today. I feel we're really, really similar or close. Somehow I feel that. I feel that affinity maybe, with you maybe as well. That's one of my weak points. Is I for me that's more important sometimes <laughs> than just some logic. Logic is important, of course. But finally, the person who for many years sacrifices themselves and gives something to you, that's a true person, I think. They're really... So that's why I help the Japanese. I know that lady over there. That lady over there, for 30, 40 years, she's volunteered for charity. She's sacrificed herself. So there's something true there. For something to be true, it should be kind of eternal. Yes. So, so I, 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 I think... Your name is Farhad, yeah? Yeah. Farhad. So Farhad... I, My I, dad was into Persian poetry. Uh, Persian poetry is one of the best kinds that's out there. 
one thing. Is a beautiful name. Yes, thank you. It's, it's Some say it's got Persian links as well. Yeah, yeah, I think. Who knows? They, yeah, yeah. They so, love your name in Iran. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, very beautiful people there as well. But here's the thing. You Everything are, from God. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, bearing this in mind that in in religion and in theology there is definitely the it's like our brain we've got the left hemisphere we've got the right hemisphere yes one looks at the logical reasonable aspects and the right looks at the creative and the abstract elements oh yes 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 and both work together to give us complete intelligence yeah so similarly i would say religion satisfies both elements of the hemisphere it gives us both the logical aspect and it gives us both or the other the emotional aspect for example when it comes to the family structure because we've mentioned this several times yes you probably know the narration of the prophet where he says paradise lies under the feet of your mother oh yeah i heard that one yes yeah, 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 yeah. and even when god is talking about his love with the creation he gives the analogy of the love that a mother has with her child yes and allah says i, I love oh, wow. you yeah oh, amazing i love oh, you I love yeah i love you 70 times more than your mother yeah wow. and and even when the father is kind of spoken that your father is your your gate to paradise for us as muslims the family structure and family values are incredibly important in fact here in the uk where people are currently confused what is a man exactly. what is a woman yes. you will see muslims at the forefront and one of their arguments is family values we have to uh, you know put forward family values in yes. fact another hadith that says that if a man this is at a time of Arabia where women were being buried alive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Muslims were being told that if you have two daughters yeah, and you raise them to puberty well, that's a source of paradise for you. Oh, wow. So at a time that we were told, you know, where society was telling us that this is a shame on you, Muslims were told... 180 degrees opposite. Yeah. Exactly. This was 1400 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And women, we were told that, again, women, they are the mothers, they are underneath their feet, you know, the dirtiest part of the body, well, the second dirtiest part yes. is the foot. The, yeah. yeah, and underneath that, that's where paradise lies. It shows humbleness. It shows that, you know what, you don't look down on any part of your mother. An immense love and respect for your mother. And here, when you hear Muslims talking, we say, don't put your parents in old people's homes. Uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woe be to that person who, if their parents reach old age, and they don't earn paradise through them. Another saying of the oh, Prophet. I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. In the Quran again, it says, it's don't an even. Opportunity to earn paradise yeah. by serving. Don't even say, don't even say oof to your parents. Like your mom is calling you, ah. Oh. Like don't even say that to your parents. So everything that you I said. I had an aunt who said this once. I, I yeah. really remember something. So with, I was visiting the Middle East. Yeah. So with us, Alhamdulillah, all of this comes as a consequence of the theology. But just like you see, there are people that are scientists, doctors, lawyers, engineers, or even plumbers, you know, builders, people working in retail, whatever. People come from different backgrounds and there are so many people calling them towards God. So there has to be a certain criteria that is logical. Indeed, what should result from there has to be that which is embedded in love. Which is? Which is embedded in love. Yes. Which is embedded in family values. Yes. Like they say, Islam came to uh, preserve five things life intellect religion wealth family oh wow <laughs> so we're definitely actually together. i like the word islam as well because it comes from this salam and peace and peace i think does. we need this deep in our hearts yeah. we definitely do i like the word actually. and my friend look if you look even in palestine which the world um, food organization is saying that if you look at majority of the starving people on the planet you'll find them in gaza UN 2017, they said that if you want to see, um, in fact, the ninth UN leader, Antonio, he said, if you, oh, want to, yes. yeah, if you want to see hell on earth, look at the children of Gaza. And today, if you switch on the news, you see the children that have lost their family. They say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, that people, even in the depths of oppression, they are calling to the Most High and saying, you are enough for us. Yeah, this is this is faith in its unadulterated form. Oh, yeah, yeah, that God is enough for us. We don't wow. need people. Wow. We don't need justice from these people. Wow. And we don't need even these Arab countries helping us. God is enough for us and he will be the just 
right. and that's why I'm saying that look oh, that's very... and that's why I'm saying that look the first question has to be on scripture yeah that okay even before we get into that the first question is which scripture is the correct scripture yes and as Muslims we say that look as Muslims we say that look you have different scriptures Sorry, I didn't mean to take too much of your time no 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 it's okay it's a good conversation okay when it comes to scripture your prophet what language did he speak mm. Jesus spoke Aramaic the New Testament is written in Greek yes and Jesus spoke Aramaic and Aramaic is an endangered language yes the Quran was revealed in Arabic Muslims read the Quran in Arabic the original language the original language no one can come and put little you know brackets and this and that in the Quran this doesn't work in fact children as young as six have memorized the Quran from beginning to end oh yeah I've heard it. so if I can if I recite the Quran now and I add a mistake in it he'll correct me he'll say oh you forgot that one word yeah but when it comes to the Bible the Protestant Bible has 66 books Catholic Bible has That's 73 more, books yeah, yeah. And there are certain things that. The council in Nicaea, they decided to not Exactly. Them, yeah. But we say we don't rely on a council to decide the creed of something that's innate. Because Justin Barrett did an Oxford, uh, Oxford University study in which he looked at 20 countries and he concluded that the, the nature, the fitra, the, what's the word, the innate disposition of a human being is to believe in a God. And he actually mentions the word fitra. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the Muslim term for innate disposition yes. of believing in a God. And um, a lot of like deep in the essence of a human being. Exactly. Yeah. That even if you leave something, um, there was uh, what's her name? Uh, she's a Russian, but she looked at a study and she said, among seven-year-olds, they have more of a proclivity to believe in a god because it's innate within them. Yes. Yeah. But when you go into society and you pull this way and that way, that's why it's important. Actually, Pop I went to Russia and then they just had 75 years of communism, and some families. They were there, and I was surprised because they're so was a Christian country, but they didn't know the main things of Christianity. In fact, they said, oh, I had a grandmother who used to read a book, mm. but they were forgetting because three generations is a long time, 70 years. Yes, yeah. And we forgot East, East Europe was just 40 years, yeah. but Russia itself was 70 odd years. But there were some secret Christians, of course, or some kind of Orthodox. It's the same with the Muslims. Like We had to go undercover. There were madrasas, yeah. and there was, you know, Madrasas had to be made undercover to kind of evade detection. Oh, yeah. But even now, like we have the oldest manuscript is actually in this country of the Quran, no way. which dates to the time of the Prophet. Is it in Oxford or something? It's the uh, University of Birmingham, Birmingham, but it's been carbon dated by the University of Oxford. Wow, wow. And they've concluded that there is 100% word accuracy. Wow. And uh, But when you look at the oldest Christian manuscript, it comes 300 years after Jesus. Ah, yeah, the old ones. Yeah, yeah and even those, they're Greek, they're not Aramaic. So and someone's already translated. Or yeah, something. there's like the earliest uh, scribes amongst Christianity, they were not experts, they were oppressed. But the earliest scribes amongst Muslims, they were done at a time that Islam was spreading. They were already oppressed. seven centuries later, yeah? Yeah, so it was done like there were 65 scribes, I can tell you their names. But when it comes to Christians, they don't know the early scribes. In fact, there's, you can look at the King James Version, New International Version, there's bits and bobs missing. So I guess in a roundabout sort of way, what I'm saying is that one of the evidences for a book to be considered, even in the race to be from God, has to be preserved. Mm. Otherwise, if, not, if it's not preserved, how do I know what God really told me? And it has to be measurable. If, every, if in every other household amongst Muslims, there are Hufad, people that memorize the Quran, that's a very testable way of somebody saying, you know what, I can't just add things in and out of the no, Quran because no, no. it's been mass memorized. See, for me, of course, scripture is important. And then I think action is important. <laughs> oh, so, indeed. So I, well, maybe I don't, I, I maybe I'm just, 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 just forgive my yeah. one, one add. Uh, addition there was a Gallup poll that was done Gallup Gallup and Pew are very high yeah, rank yeah, when it comes yeah, to polls yeah. so Gallup asked people of different religions is it in are there any circumstances is it okay for you ever to kill innocent civilians oh wow the highest group of adherents that said no you can't were the Muslims with a staggering 89%. Oh, that's very good. So when you're looking at, and even the Daily Mail released a poll here in the UK, they said the happiest are the Muslims. 
and the most charitable here in the UK are the Muslims. You can Google this stuff when you go home. Um, it's yeah. recorded as well, you can check it. So even when you look at implementation, like you can have Muslims of different, you know, theology, this, that, all of them will accept there's one God. All of them will accept that Muhammad is the last messenger. All of them will accept that the Quran is the final book. All of them will accept that you respect your parents, you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal. So when it comes to Christians, there's Unitarian, Trinitarian. Some believe Jesus is the son of God, some believe he's the prophet, some believe he is God, some believe what are you talking about. So there's so many different theologies. Surely if something comes from God, like you said, we need to be talking about uniting us. And if even religion has so many questions and it's so difficult to garner and understand, is that really from God when that's adding to our burden when you've got people killing each other? So that would be my question. That's where I think Islam stands head and shoulders above the rest in terms of its ease of comprehension, its preservation of text and its adherence worship, like putting your head on the ground, humbling yourself in front of God, not needing an intermediary between you and God. You raise your hand and you can pray to God right now. Respect, yeah, respect of your parents. Like if you look at the the statistics, the majority of the people that keep a connection with their parents, not just at Christmas and at Easter, is Muslims. So when you look at implementation, implementation, yeah, yeah that's why I'm saying both. Because you mentioned both Islam. So, so, so that's yeah. why maybe it's, it's I think because I went there was in, there was a a lot of Muslim leaders hmm. who cooperated in the projects I was active in. So I, I, that's why I could guess there can't be a contradiction. Yes. Because otherwise it wouldn't be possible to easily to cooperate, right? That's right. And um, I think, I, think um, I agree, I understand, and definitely I like what you said, the Islamic things, that humbling to God and just raise your hand to God. And I like the idea. That I think the problem is, honestly, the problem is usually the devil uses, I think, the difference of races and nationalities and languages and cultures to get people to fight each other. Yes. Playing with people. So, so I think, but what you're saying is very true. Like, in other words, God is trying to work in every part of the world with every human being. I, I try, personally, this is my thing, I try to avoid <laughs> too much getting into saying this one's a little bit better, this one's a little bit worse, this one's got that strong point. It's true, actually you're right, there are actually strong points and weak points in different groups that we meet. That's actually true, what you're saying. But because my job is to stop people killing each other and to get people to help each other and but, to but Farhad, make, you can, you break can down do those that. barriers. Yeah, you, you can do that, but at the end of the day, you're going to be going to your grave and you've got your own kind of trajectory to come afterwards. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that religion is something that can happen off camera. You can, you know, say, you know, I'm affiliated with this religion or this or that. However, your work can continue and it doesn't have to impede with your work. And you don't even have to tell people that you're a Muslim. You could be a Muslim and that's something you're doing personally. But the thing is, it, I'm speaking to Farhad. Okay. Not, you know, the, the individual in the organization. Frankly, like the organization is there. Exactly. But I'm, organization, just organization. Yeah, yeah, like I'm speaking to you. Mm. I want the best for you. Mm. And because you've given me that respect of, uh, you know, listening Sorry, and I didn't engaging. Mean to take your time. No, but what I'm saying is good. I, I liked that. And that's okay. why I'm saying that it's important for me to kind of help you kind of understand and realize that this is a, a very important decision for you. Organization put to the side and they don't need to know about your personal thing. Mm. But what is your personal kind of understanding and leanings? That's something that we really need to get to the nuts and the bolts of because personally, in fact, even objectively, I think you opening your heart to Islam will inform and improve your life more than it is. Because if you have that connection with God, that unadulterated connection that he's put, that look, I am one God, this is my Quran. Reading the Quran, the vibrations that you will feel in your soul, your spirit, your physique, your, your mental, mentally, like people can recite the Quran and it will, you know, wake them up somehow. Yeah, definitely. You know, revive that. People will call it different things: the pineal gland, the third eye, whatever you want to call it. But that spirit that lies dormant within, and that can only come if you connect yourself to God. It's like a toaster, unconnected to electricity. It looks brilliant. Connect it, then it does more than it is. So when you connect, and you, you accept Islam. 
then you pray five times a day and it's you and God. You put your head down, you recite the Quran, you will feel it yourself, you will see it yourself. I'm not saying it should impede in what you're doing and that can continue on the side. I'm saying take time out to prepare for, we believe, the life hereafter, mm, which, is, that. Yeah, which is more important than what happens here. This is Some, a short time, that's a very, very long time. <laughs> agreed. Eternity. And I'm saying that when you hear about Islam, like you know that it resonates with you. It, mm. it, you know, it, it, there's empirical data that I've given, there's you know, um, empirical evidence I've given when it comes to manuscripts and stuff like that. Even when it comes to prophecies of the Prophet, and there's, there's so much that you can look into that Islam is head and shoulders above the rest. Because in terms of accuracy, precision, that's what you need. You don't need a theology that is going to be an extra burden upon you. You want something that makes sense, that can be measured and you get on with your life and help other people using that energy that you've got. Not something that pulls you down like you said and makes you hate other people and fight other people. That's not helpful at all. That's why an ex-nun called Karen Armstrong, she wrote a book called Fields of Blood in which she continued in which she concluded pretty much that most of these religious wars are actually political. Mm. Because, I've heard the name Karen Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, because even when you look at Iraq, Iraq, according to Robert Pape, he's done a comprehensive study in a book called Dying to Win. He said before America invaded Iraq, there was no suicide bombings. Zero. Mm. And he said only <laughs> after, after the... the yeah, then it started increasing. It's the same with Palestine as well. Before this whole Balfour Declaration, Jews, Muslims, Christians lived in peace. However, when this got in, you know, oh, okay, we'll give this like the British consulate gave it to Israel and the Nakba happened. That's when all of this drama started kicking off because it was a political thing. Muslims, though, one of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to be a Jew. So that's not something that we really necessarily have an issue with. So it's people like that, that I know you and I can join hands in combating because stuff like that is not necessarily helpful to our common goal of, like we say, the Prophet came to unite, not to divide. So we look, the Quran says to us as well, come to common terms between us and you. And the common terms are what? That we believe in, no God but Allah. Because most people in their hearts of hearts know there can't be multiple gods, otherwise, like the whole clash of the titans scenario oh, yeah, yeah. yeah they're gonna start fighting each other and i want this and i want that so it doesn't necessarily make sense so i guess what i'm saying is that islam will inform your uh, life it will direct your life it will be more clearer it's like like if i look around now it's blurry i put this on ah hd i see that you know everything is more sharper that's what Islam is going to do yes you may innately recognize this is bad this is good however when it comes to Islam it will help you understand and appreciate I've these things I've got to give more. them a ride oh uh, he came in my car no problem if you need to go you need to go I, but yeah. I would like to talk more I'll be here next week if you want to let's keep communicating I think we need to talk more fantastic I'll be here I feel next very week. close I mean, there's no barrier I don't feel a barrier. Is that okay? You have broken the barrier. <laughs> God and just good. <laughs> Take care. God, yeah. Take care. I think we have a lot of people. I, I believe so. Maybe we'll do Take some care. joint projects. Inshallah. Uh, is that. Is that. Oh, that's good. What time is it? <laughs>